I'm in this really weird place where I feel like I don't, uh, I'm in a good place that, what did you say earlier? You said like, oh, it's not fully baked or something like that. Mm. Like, I don't even know what I would say. I feel like I'm experiencing i feel like i've just been consuming, experiencing one long thing since taiwan yeah and i guess if i'm being honest i don't know if i want to talk about it because i don't know why just i just feel like i mean if i guess i'm really honest i feel like if i talk about it it's somehow gonna just make it go away oh <laughs> and that happens to me all the time like sometimes it's this feeling of like it's too sacred sometimes it's a feeling of like I don't want to put it into words and sometimes it's mm -hmm. just like a I don't want to yeah intellectualize it I guess yep I completely love that I know yeah, I know what you're speaking to I love it I want to honor it um but I will say and again this is I've talked about this before the irony is not lost on me that we have a podcast where oh, yeah. we talk about this stuff because then I feel like I come to these podcasts and almost like I have nothing to talk about because there's nothing we that I managed to make two hour long. Episodes, yeah. But it's, so there's nothing like, out. I, yeah. So I'm kind of just kind of going with the flow. And if you have something to talk about, I think that's great because I wonder if one day it's going to like boil and into something more concrete. Mm. Um, mm. But I'm going to be honest, like I'm, it's, I'm having like a, an experience that I'm not even sharing with Adam. If, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like I don't want to share with the podcast or with you. This is just, I'm just, having an experience <laughs> mm. so that's i mind. that my whole body feels happy about that cool because yeah. um yeah i've also had ex it's i mean we say this all the time like that there are just these experiences that are like beneath language and yeah. and i think like as soon as i have this experience like after like it like if liz and i do a client session that feels really profound where I will like, 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 there's this way in which our our language in particular, I think, can like pull me beneath language, mm -hmm. and we'll just sit. I'll just sit there afterwards. Like, you know, we'll like talk. We'll like the client will leave, and we'll just be mm -hmm. there's the two of us, and it's like we both just like sit there and look at each other. Like that's <laughs> that's that's the space holding is like I don't know, buddy. I don't know any words, but I'm also like in this with you. Mm -hmm. And also, isn't it so delicious? That there are no words. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I guess what I'm rambling, trying to say, and I'm really delighted that you're having an experience that feels so delicious. You don't want to speak about it. Yeah. And but I'm going to be honest, it's simple. Like it's nothing. It's yeah. Super simple. And also, oh, and the other thing is, can I just tell you how funny it is though? Is that like the thought will come, like, it's almost like a, a habit at this, you know, a reflux, a habit, some kind of compulsion where something in my brain goes, Ooh, how can I teach about this? <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't want to teach about it. I don't want to teach about yeah. it. I don't want to like ruin it by commodifying it. I, I find, kind of mm. but I just, I, but the compulsion is what I'm, what I think is hilarious. Like, I don't, I guess I just developed that over the years somehow. Like it's compulsive Kylie, where I'm like, how can I explain this to other people and put it in a package and be like, here, you can do this too. And I just like, I have no interest in doing that. And I'm actually not sure how I feel about that. I feel a little conflicted because I'm like, yeah, it's kind of actually making me like question a lot of things about my job, if I'm being honest. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I love this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm sure at some point, even if not on the podcast, you yeah. and I will have a conversation because it just seems like it's a slow unfurling, but I've had a lot of thoughts about like my, my, my job, my business my career i don't know i don't know what that's going to end up in oh when you're ready to talk about this i would love to because i feel like that actually feels like a reoccurring of something that we've talked about before in terms of like how you show up, how one shows up on social media and like am i contributing to noise or am i actually like you know yeah making space so um yeah it just it's just like it's and I think that's a helpful reflection, actually, because I'm like, oh, yeah, like this does come up. If something is continuously reoccurring, you know, I, I should pay attention to it. It's like, yeah, it, and it, 
I don't know. It's like in, I feel like to a part, the part of me that wants, that wants to be the ascetic who's living in a cave. Mm. Like there's, there's something appealing about that to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so being so like public with Instagram or whatever, it's also something that it's, it's just a conflict. Cause I, it's something that I think I'm actually really good at and something that I actually kind of like too. So mm. it's just where that this thing about being pulled in two directions. Yeah. 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 I also will say like your point about like having some profound experience and then instantly being like, Ooh, how can I teach this is hilarious. And I know that. And it's like, just another, but one of the ways that that shows up for me is like, I'll like, I'll go to write because I'm trying, I'm really trying to like, um, I've wanted to like write long form things for like a long, long time. That's always been an interest of mine. And so Mm -hmm. I'm like, really intentionally moving my energy towards that and I will find like and so one of the ways I'm doing it is I'm trying to just like write but not for anything so not like Mm. a journal entry in which I'm trying to solve a problem and also not writing a post or an email but just Mm. like I'm just writing for the sake of exploring and like forward looking as Mm -hmm. opposed to like journaling to me is very like problem solving Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. I'm just like writing to play with ideas Mm -hmm. anyway and I find how almost instantly as soon as I like latch into something that's like kind of a cool idea in this like free writing it just like starts like becoming a post yeah (laughs) like exactly yeah and I don't know that's 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 not a problem if it's not a problem but it's a problem if you don't want that to be how it is and And I think it's a oh sorry go ahead I don't know. I just think it's, I don't know. That's why I think, I think it's, I said, like, I use the word habit because I think it's just the result of being in this line of work. Yeah. And but well, I don't want my brain to do that automatically. It kind of, yeah. it kind of like annoys me if I'm being honest. I'm like, I just want it to be what it is without needing to commodify it. And though, I don't, I think if you were in a different line of work, like the, like that, that, like the brain is always interested in making things smaller right? So like the reason why it's a quote unquote problem that if I'm like free writing and playing with language, and then I start to shrink it into a post, it's because I can feel myself making it about an outcome and making it about a product instead of like just existing in the play. Mm -hmm. But like, that's what our brains would, like, if you were an aesthetic in the cave, your brain would probably still do that. It would just do it about something else. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Is that true? I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like when I used to write, yeah, you're right. I probably just did it with other things, but you know, writing- That's my point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you. I guess you're right. Like we would just find something. I think I'm just sad that it's hijacked. Like I think writing is a great example because I've had that experience and I don't like that it's hijacked writing because I really like writing. And then, and, or I really like- I don't know. I really just like being without yeah, right. having, without like, <laughs> yeah, like you've, you've made your career about the thing you love the most in the, arguably the thing that's like most precious to you, which is like mm-hmm. your pursuit of freedom and spiritual mm-hmm. expansion, Yeah, which means there's a really interesting article my friend shared with me years ago that was actually about this. It was about how like the whole culture of like like make your work something that you love is actually like the person's um, argument was like, it's actually really harmful totally. because then it like commodifies and capitalizes mm-hmm. on the thing that you love and makes mm-hmm. it about like being productive and bringing value out of it. Mm-hmm. And so your art no longer gets to be this place of like play and creative expression mm-hmm. and who fucking cares what happens with it. It becomes like just part of the like cog in the machine. Totally. So yeah, I mean, just progressive, we're getting real dark. We're basically turning spiritual expansion and enlightenment into just another cog in the capitalist machine. Yeah, well, that's like my, well, I don't actually feel that we're doing that, but I yeah. guess that's my like fear. fear. Or, or I don't know if it's my fear, it's just that I never want anything. And this is, this has been true, I think for both of us since day one, like, I just never want anything that I make or put out there to ever have any residue of feeling icky mm. for whatever reason. 
And I don't know if that's like us being a cog in the wheel or whatever, but, but it's this idea of like, yeah, I just, it, it's going to feel icky if, if, I don't, do you know what I mean by that? I do. Yeah. Like, um, and sometimes I think you have to be, sometimes, I don't know if you feel this, but sometimes I have to be, something will start to feel icky, but I don't know why. So I have to like sit in the like discomfort mm -hmm. till I can, till, till, mm, how do I want to say this? Like maybe I'm like talking about a certain topic or like putting out a certain offer and it will start to feel like not resonant mm -hmm. and there's a part of me that's like oh quick fix it but I'm learning to like be in the dissonance mm -hmm. to understand better and then move from a place of like um yeah I find more sovereignty showing up and like allow actually allowing the ick to stick around for longer mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. does that make yeah. sense totally yeah I totally understand that process and I think it's beautiful and I yeah. And I will also say, even though I never want to put anything out that's ick, I've also put out things in hindsight where, where I would go back and be like, oh, that's not in alignment anymore. Like that just doesn't feel true or right or good. And, it, and then it's like, you know, gone. Yeah. I like delete it. Yes. Anyway, we could, yes. we're having, <laughs> this is perfect. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Who knows what we'll pick as the starting point for this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we going to do a formal, like, I'm Eva. Should we do it? Just drop it in the middle? Because that feels really juicy. I feel like that should, what we just discussed should be part of the show. Oh, all right. Well then, hi guys. I'm Eva. <laughs> I'm <Kylie>. <laughs> <laughs> I love us so much. Yeah. <sighs> Welcome to the podcast. Yes. Yeah. All right, this was, so that was just us, me and Kylie kind of just catching up and talking about business and where we're, where we're at and what we're feeling. And so rather than start all over, we'll just keep that in here. So <laughs> and also you'll witness how much Kylie and Eva online and offline is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. There is zero difference. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, except for, we, I feel like we gush about how much we love each other even more. more when we're yeah. Offline. <laughs> yeah. If you I don't want imagine. to be too annoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I am, I am happy that you're having a delicious experience of existing right now. And I love your new office setup. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Top of the show. Yeah. I rearrange everything. I mean, we have, a, we're, we're on YouTube now folks. So if you like wanted That's to see, right. see our face, our glorious faces, usually I feel like kind of in PJs. Uh, yes. I, it, we record late at night. I am always in PJs. <laughs> yeah. I did manage to leave my eye makeup on today. So, I think you, you look know. great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. thanks um, thanks. Yeah, you can catch us. Uh, you, I think you got. You're always in this lovely daytime, like evening hours light. You know, there's like some sunlight out for you. Like we're fully in the dark. My, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be in this light for a long time because because we're so north. It doesn't get dark until like oh yeah ten. So like in oh, like the thick of summer, wild. it's gonna be like bright until ten, and and it's kind of awesome. I, I personally yeah. love it. Um, yeah, that yeah. sounds really delicious. Yeah, yeah. So where do we go from here, my friend? Mm. Well, I mean, I can talk about the kind of wild week that I had, but before I do that, do you want to, is there anything happening in your business that you want people to know about? Uh, yeah. Come hire me as your <laughs> spiritual mentor. <laughs> I don't know why that delights me so much, but that's it. <laughs> Yes. I mean, it's pretty straight. No one heard you because I was laughing so loud. <laughs> be, be pretty simple. Uh, this work is fun. It's delicious. It's juicy. Um, my clients and I have a really good time. Your mind will be blown open. Your life will completely change. <laughs> this is like, I think the best pitch you've done yet. I love this. I think we gotta, we gotta warm you up more often before we- I know. I just gotta keep it short pitch. and sweet and simple to the yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to have your mind blown? Do you want to change everything? Yeah. Hire Eva. Work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, find me on Instagram, DM me. Uh, you can apply to work with me on my website. I st that's, it that's still it. sounds so fucking sexy to me that people have to apply to work with you. I'm like, that's right. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really important. I feel like, and it really sets the tone yeah. and it's made a big difference in my business because I used to get a lot of people who were like, not that serious or, mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I just love um, what about you, my friend? Okay. Two things. One, uh, magic circle, everybody. Um, so if you listen to the episode with Liz last week, uh, oh, it wasn't last week by the time you're listening to this, who fucking knows when it was anyway. Um, uh, my friend Liz Simpson and I every month do magic circle, which is like this really exquisite place of like bringing in all the parts of yourself, waking up all the parts of yourself. And it's just really a space for receiving and deep and nourishing activation. Um, and it's magic. And, uh, we're kind of intentionally vague because who fucking knows what's going to happen, but it's always great. Um, and so, and tickets are only $30. So you can sign up. We turned it into a, um, membership based on like after two months, people were like, you're going to do this every month and we can pay you for a whole year up front. Right. Please. Mm-hmm. Which is a good sign that people are enjoying it. Um, so if you like the idea of being infinite, if you like experiencing ever expanding you and you like magic, come <laughs> back and join magic circle. It's the best. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've talked about this before. I've been to this magic circle. You know what I, Actually, this is reminding me. I've been wanting to like re-listen to the recording actually and just like play it before I go to bed. Yeah. I think maybe I'll do that tonight because I, I just feel like it would take me on some interesting dreams. I'd be curious to know how I would sleep and like yes. what my day would be like the next day. Just like yeah. some potent magic in my that sounds just really gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I done really that yet. It's something this. on my to-do list. So you just kind of reminded me. Oh, perfect. Fun. Yes. Um and um and then if you want even more of that, if you just really want to change everything, come to fucking retreat. So doors are officially open for Monster School, the body. Oh shit. Wait, the summer one? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. That's crazy yes. because I guess it's making me realize, yeah, that summer is yeah. approaching. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I had this weird trippy thing where we like announced it and then I was like, oh my God, it's here. We're already there. Like mm-hmm. it's so weird. Um, yeah. So monster school is retreat that Liz and I host. It's like magic circle on steroids. And, uh, the reason it's called monster school. I mean, if you listen to the podcast, you already know I'm into monsters, which is to say like all of the, all of you, especially the parts of you that you think don't get to exist. And in particular, this retreat is monster school, the body, because it is a place that we so many of us have a monstrous relationship with our bodies, right? So many of us are, um, see the body as a place uh, to be controlled or to be fixed or, right? Or at the very least to like where we live in great dissidence with our bodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think Liz and I have both found two primary options. One is to fix the body or one is to like love the body. Mm-hmm. But love isn't always available if mm-hmm. like that can feel like its own kind of gaslighting, right? Like you might like the idea of loving the body, but it that might feel artificial. And so then you're left like, well, these are two shitty choices because mm-hmm. loving the body doesn't actually feel accessible and I don't want to fix the body, but I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. And Liz and I are pretty excellent at holding the space for like, let's fucking witness. What is it? What is, what is your relationship to the body? What does it mean to be in relationship to the body? What, what does it mean to open up space? And in that space, maybe there's anger, maybe there's resentment, maybe there's fear, maybe there's a sense of betrayal, who fucking knows, but it's only in allowing all of those things to come out and no longer be seeing your body as a place that you were, where you must exert control that you begin to make a kind of space to move in a new direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I can't fucking wait. It's in New Mexico. We have the most gorgeous fucking house in the mountains. We have amazing food. We're going to magic your pants off. I mean, you can keep your pants on. like, <laughs> Or you can <laughs> but, keep them off. Or you can keep them off, you <laughs> yeah. know. Um, and the house is so gorgeous. It has like a giant library and a piano and like a giant wraparound porch. I mean, this oh place my God. is- And you're going to be in the desert, which I just feel like is a magical place yes. just in general. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you want to come be monstrous, be infinite, 
change everything, witness the body in a new way, mm. come to retreat. I really love this. I love that you're doing the body. The body is, I mean, we can just get into a whole conversation about the body. Have we ever, and I feel like maybe we should like do that at some point or yes. something like that. How, because we, I feel like we talk about the body here and there. Like it's always a part of the conversation. We know how important the body is, but I don't think we've had one just about the body, but yeah. it's like the vehicle, like, like the step before, um, like, I think all the stuff that you talked about, like between, uh, like hating the body and loving the body, all that other juicy, complicated, messy, delicious stuff when there's like you know, when, you, when people go with you and Liz and there's reconciliation, there's understanding, there's whatever there is, this healing process or just like clear seeing, um, that I think is all really helpful. Or I think even maybe a necessary first step before then you can get to this other place of like, I think what I'm trying to say is once all that stuff is kind of figured out, I think you open up a whole new doorway for how you can move through life because the, the body really is oftentimes the vehicle for like ex spiritual experiencing. Yes, exactly. That's the fucking secret, right? Is like, how do we, ex like, like the body's the portal to the infinite, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that's, that, that is actually the other reason, right? One, a big part was like, we want to make the space that we have, that we have been hungry for, right? In terms of how we can be in relationship to the body differently. And our magic is to be infinite and the body is the portal to the infinite, right? It's not surprising that when you and I talk about like moving through like complicated emotions, we both always talk about like how we are in the body mm -hmm. to move through them, yeah. right? Like, I feel like that's like a real through line. Yeah. Let's have a whole conversation about the body. That would be really Ooh. Okay. Mental yeah. note. Done. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. So I can't wait. So um, if you go to, I'll put in the show notes, but my really sexy website, ravenandmarope.com. <laughs> also, honestly, everybody, just go to the website and read this, read the like, quote unquote, sales page for the um, retreat, whether you're going to come or not, because mm. I have never felt like I was like kind of crying as I was writing the sales mm -hmm. page. Like I felt like I felt like I was just writing a love letter to myself mm. and also everyone who comes to retreat. Mm. And so it felt, it feels, um, yeah, potent, like the, the, really the page itself just feels like a kind of medicine that I want everyone to read. Yeah. I could, I totally, I totally get that. And I think, um, yeah, go to the website, feel the potent magic. If it speaks to you, then, you know, this is for you. Cause I, that happens sometimes for me too. It's like, I'll, I can like, I don't know, this is going to sound so cheesy, but there have been times where I'm like, oh, I can feel something on this website. Like it feels encoded oh. with like, I guess, I don't know, whatever it is, authenticity, something that's meant for me. And I just like, I'm like, yep, this is it. Oh yeah. I don't think that's cheesy at all. Like, yeah, absolutely. A thousand percent. Um, so go feel how sexy my website is <laughs> <laughs> and cry about the body. It'll be great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Cool. As I said that, I was just laughing because whenever I cried, Desi goes, are you crying because you're happy or sad? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good that he, um, I mean, I think it's a really good sign. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he hates either option, but mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is not like mom crying, but um, um, he's, yeah. Well, at least he can like normalize crying instead of being, you know, in certain households where it's like, <sighs> Oh yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Desi himself is such a tender hearted human that yeah. it would be a yeah. tremendous unkindness to have him grow up in a house in which yeah. crying was not an allowed. option yeah. because, yeah. you know, um, for, the, for you astrology nerds, he's a little Pisces moon. He's just uh, like, this like heart, yeah. heart Being a right Pisces, there. Yeah. Um, let's dive into what's going on with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, I kind of want to get into the yeah. meat of it because, um, I feel like there's lots that we want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so listeners a week and a half ago, I got, um, an email. It was like a surprise email that basically like pulled out from under the carpet, all of these feelings and thoughts and stories 
um, and emotions from like very, 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 very early young childhood that mostly have been like nice and packed in their boxes up on their shelf, not to be tended, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah, we dealt with them. They're fine. They can mm-hmm. stay up there and get dusty. And then there was like this email was like this little earthquake or big earthquake actually, in which yeah. all the boxes came out and all of the emotions spilled out onto the floor. Um, and uh, I think the specifics of like the email and the backstory are irrelevant. Mm-hmm. And it has felt like the real time, like it has felt like living the medicine that you and I speak to all the time. Mm. And so um, I I do want to kind of talk about what I think can, what I think can happen when kind of, I want to say emotional crisis, that sounds like harsher, but also like you know, when like these really big, intense waves of emotions come and yeah, what it that, means. I think that's pretty accurate. emotional crisis. Like, I think we all go through emotional crises, like, <laughs> especially yeah, when, like thank old, you. whatever, like old trauma or past stuff or unresolved things, whatever, all of that stuff is yeah. an emotional crisis. <laughs> yeah. And I guess actually, if I'm transparent, I think that was the me who was like, don't be messy. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think like, especially because I've moved, like big things have moved even in this short period of time. And I just kind of want to like, well, one, you're the person that I love to unpack things with. Mm -hmm. And then two, for the sake of like listeners, I want to like share my own experience of like facing the, like how, how you sit in the waves of these really intense emotions and like what becomes possible if you, if you, if you sit in them rather than run away from them. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Um, Cause it has not been an academic exercise for me the past 10 days. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it hasn't been this idea. It's been like the like path of survival. So, yeah. Yeah. So I will say, let's see. I talked to, day, to Kylie day one, basically the day that she got this email. And so the last time that I spoke to you, it was day one, meaning yeah, it was, was like, a lot. Hey girl, what's up? And I was like, <laughs> I'm laying on my couch watching a Marvel movie crying. What's up with you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I haven't talked to you since, but I, I, I guess I kind of want to, for, well, this is for me, I was gonna be like for the listeners, but no, it's not for listeners. It's for me. I want to know maybe more. I think for me, the context that might be helpful is like what's proceeded since then. Mm. Like, yeah. cause I think, and I, and I just want to say, I will say from what I noticed day one was what day one should have been. Like I, I caught you in a moment where things were feeling heavy and confusing and sad. And I was just like, you know, if you don't feel like doing shit, don't do shit. <laughs> like yeah. just chill the fuck out and just like be in your soup. Yeah. Well, and I think like, I think, you know, we, when we are kids, we just like pack up emotions and like, you know, like we get really good as humans as, you know, like dissecting and making tidy. And, um, and then I think these moments come along that disrupt something we have been carrying for a really long time and it can feel awful. I mean, like Liz and I call it Ragnarok, end of the world, Armageddon, right? For a reason, like it can feel awful. It can even feel like, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. Right. And it is always the place of, it is always the fucking liberation every fucking Mm -hmm. time. You know, Mm -hmm. I have some mindfulness around not being cryptic. And I want to like specifically say that, uh, like the specifics of what transpired still feel really like intimate and also like in process. And so sharing them just feels like the cake is only half baked. Mm-hmm. You stuck yeah. the knife in the middle. It's coming out all gooey. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like an integrity. It doesn't like feel it. an integrity to like speak to that. Although at some point I'm sure that I will, mm-hmm. but the thing that I want to speak about is like, I feel really fucking proud of the way that I have shown up for myself in this kind of period of emotional upheaval. And, you know, we talk all the time about like, sit in the shadow and like, 
be, you know, choose your emotions. And uh, it's not necessarily, it's not easy. It can be very difficult. And I want to just, I want to speak to my experience of what it has looked like and what it has meant and like practically how I have done that mm -hmm. because maybe it will help give permission for somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I think and, you should be fucking proud of like, yeah. of how it sounds like things have transpired. Yeah. Um, and like, and so I want to learn too. So like, yeah. <laughs> let me have it. <laughs> yeah. So I think the, um, I think the, so the biggest thing is like, so I get this email that like, you know, little, Rocks thin little world. earthquake, knocked all the boxes off. Yeah. And I had a client session lined up 25 minutes later and I had, I teach, and I taught, I teach a group program that was like two hours later. And I sat there for about five minutes and I was like, I have to cancel. Mm -hmm. And so with like 20 minutes to go, I wrote an email. So I had like a very short email to my client. It was just like, can't, sorry. And yeah. cancel class and same thing, like cancel class. And to me, actually, that was the moment that set the, the tone for everything that's happened these 10 days. Mm -hmm. Cause it was this moment of like, could I have like packed it all in and been like, we'll deal with this at six o'clock. Like it's mm -hmm. only four hours. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. And also that was a moment where I was like, and I don't have to do that. I don't have to make myself tidy. I don't have to pretend that I'm fine. Like, I don't actually think I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And I want, and I, I deserve to feel however I feel, which in this moment, if I'm honest, is messy and sad. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, I think, I think that yeah. in itself, which is what you told me, was like that in itself was important to acknowledge because I think in the past, Right. What I think you told me some story about how like in the past, and it just wouldn't have been that way. Yeah. It would have been like, yeah, it's like the thing that gets us in trouble in the first place is just being like, oh, let me just power through. <laughs> yeah. Right. How, I mean, how often, whether it's because we're uncomfortable with our mess or we think other people will judge us for our mess, mess here, meaning like having emotions, mm -hmm. like how often do we like, I mean, even just think of times that you want to like cry and you're like, oh, but I can't cry in front of people. Like mm -hmm. our default is like, I can't be inappropriate totally. in that, like my emotions can't take up any space. Yeah. And how like compulsive, like even around sometimes like close friends, I'll still be like, I'll cry. And then I'll like, some, I'll say something. I don't know if I still say this, but maybe, maybe I wouldn't be surprised if I did. I'd be like, sorry, I'm crying. Or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Just like that really, just a slight sort of like undercutting. Or even sometimes we're alone. Well, I'll like sometimes I'll be alone and I'll go to cry and I will like have this like knee jerk reaction to like rein it in. Totally like totally. I'm fucking alone, right? Yeah, and like, yeah. again, yeah. thankfully I like then try to like um, just lean into it. But like, it's just so pervasive, the like, your emotions are messy and are inappropriate and like deal with them on your own time. Yeah. You know, I just had this weird vision of like, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's a combination of like maybe past like psychedelic trips slash, I don't know, some, some, some version that I think of existed of reality where just like women gathering together. Oh shit. Have you ever seen that? movie? probably not. There's this movie called, um, ah, oh, Midsummer. Probably mm -hmm. never seen it. Well, for anyone else out there who's listening, who's seen Midsummer, they know what they're talking about. There's this, it's this horrifying, like really trippy movie. That's also beautiful, but really scary. And I don't do well with scary movies. Yeah. But that's why you were one, like, oh, she's yeah. definitely not watched it. <laughs> But I also like couldn't take my eyes away because mm. I think in part you would kind of love it, but there is this yeah. one scene where it, it's haunting. It's this woman and she's just surrounded by other women and she is hysterical and she's just like crying and she's like overwhelmed and she's freaked out and she's panicking. And then all the women around her have the same emotions. They're mimicking her emotions. And it's this big, loud scene of just like mm -hmm. intense emotions. And it kind of reminded me of, I feel like actually how it's supposed to be actually like in some sacred space where women and men were holding each other, just like you could be completely untamed and have whatever emotion you want. And that's actually how it's supposed to be and how fucking 
I think brilliant that would be. I think that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but I think that's like being efficient with your energy because you're just like, have you experience? Because mm. how inefficient is it that we like, you know, try and get it together? <laughs> and then, and then again, that there's like a cascade of problems yeah. that come from that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that's really true. And I think like, I think in that moment, because what was also interesting was like, like I was like, there was some part of me who was like, we're fine. This is fine. We're total, nothing to see here. And the other part of me was like, dude, no, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to decide, we're going to decide to not be fine. Right. And then I went upstairs to talk to my husband and he's like, what's up? And I just instantly started crying. And it was it, like, like, I almost feel like I gave myself permission to cry talking to him in the moment that I canceled everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And that maybe if I hadn't canceled everything, I would have gone upstairs and maybe I would, maybe those tears wouldn't have been available mm. because I had made a choice that was like, no, 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 fine is more important. And, um, yeah. and so that's what I mean by like, I chose, I, I chose myself. I chose that. Like I get to be messy. I get to heal, feel like I, yeah. I, I get to feel whatever I'm going to feel from this. And mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm choosing that space gets to show up for it. And I think, and then I've just been making that same choice now for 10 days, but I think that was a, like a initial, a, a, yeah. a really big moment. Um, yeah. I don't know why, again, I'm seeing all these visuals. <laughs> the other I like one this. Seeing, it was like, what's so interesting. It's almost like you you were at a crossroads for which timeline you were going to go down. Yes. And, and you chose the timeline that opened the one that was going to lead to a lot of good things. Whereas the other timeline would have been like, no, I'm going to like plow through these meetings and calls. And then you're going to get to your husband and you're not going to cry. You're going to like tell him about it, but you're going to like hold it all in. And then, and then you're right. going to have a whole different experience that day, which will lead to a whole different experience the next day in like two separate timelines. And like, <laughs> And like one is like far less efficient to use your point, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not that like Nick is so gracious, like, and, and I cry in front of him all the time. So it's not like, oh, I wouldn't have cried because I would have been still trying to hold it in. But it's like, I would have told my body that like, no, no, fine is the most important, which is what I have told myself for 37 years, right? And so, um, yeah, I think you're exactly right. It was like, are you choosing the most efficient path to liberation or are you choosing like the, con I, the convoluted sort of kind of drags on yeah. um, status quo, I think in some ways too, which is like, hold it together. Like, oh, is a crisis? I mean, basically like, oh, are you in crisis? Mm -hmm. Can you duct tape this back together? Yeah. Versus, oh, are you in crisis? Can you just fucking let it fall apart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually what I did is like, I just gave myself permission to let my life fall apart for a week. Mm -hmm. Um, because what ended up happening is, um, I messaged my one-on-one -on -one clients and was like, so, so that was on Monday. Uh, Tuesday was a day of like, similarly, just like tremendous, like kind of just like feeling all the waves of feelings and feeling all the waves of feelings. And then by Wednesday, I was like, oh no, we're in this. And I had to, I had to message my clients and was like, I'm not actually able to hold space in a way. Like I would not feel an integrity yeah. to me to mm -hmm. hold space. Yeah. Um, again, like, could I muscle through? Yeah. Cause I'm a great fucking coach. Mm -hmm. And also like, I would have been miserable. Yeah. <laughs> my clients deserve me not miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that was really fucking vulnerable. Right. Cause it was one thing when it was like in the immediate moment, but then like three days later to be like, oh yeah, I actually can't really message with you mm -hmm. and I can't, and I have to move these sessions and also like, good luck, mm -hmm. you know? Um, thankfully I have the best fucking clients in the world, but like, that was another moment of like, are you going to choose what you actually need mm -hmm. or are you going to yeah. like be tidy? And then similarly, I was also sick but that's it. That's Wednesday. So that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Wednesday was also a night where like, then my whole body started to fall apart. Yeah. But no COVID, right? I forgot. To no, check in Birdie actually does have COVID, but the she rest does? of us. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> just like, I think just tells you something about the week that I'm like, oh yeah. And by the way, my three-year-old's COVID, no big deal. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, yeah, there's a lot going on, but I mean, is yeah. she okay? Yeah, no, no. Thankfully mm-hmm. she's fine. I mean, she's poor thing is like very cranky and unhappy. She yeah. doesn't feel good, but yeah. like, you know, the, mostly has wanted lots of cuddles so far. All the rest of us have stayed healthy. That's and awesome. so yeah. we're grateful for that. And like, you know, have you got, she, you haven't gotten COVID, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. No. Neither have I, I feel like if I don't get it now where like literally my three-year-old coughing in my face all the time, then like, I'm probably not going to. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I mean, it's just, it is funny though. I'm like, it's crazy. I'm actually like shocked that, you know, neither yeah. so far Adam and I haven't gotten it. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. So we also had a podcast recording that night with a guest that we were excited to interview and my whole body, like I just started to feel like all over, like, and we had just found out recently that there are sitter and cover anyway. So I was like, again, it was a moment. Sorry. Again, it was a moment of like, I could muscle through it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I could, I could find it in me. I could, pull, especially because our podcasts are always so energizing that like, even if afterwards I'm like, oh fuck, I was up too late. Like mm-hmm. in it, in the moment, I'm fine. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, you were also very gracious. And it was like again this moment of like, are you going to choose to take up space and be messy mm-hmm. and like let your needs come first, or are you going to do what you think other people need you to do? Yeah, yeah. Or or for me, I think my issue is I think I'm a. Mm, who knows, depending on the situation, but like, I've definitely had to cancel on clients before and switch things around to take care of me. I think the hard part for me is the afterwards where sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I'll, um, it's, it's, can we do that? And then also not have the like follow up story. About it. Yeah. Like, mm. like, oh, I feel so guilty. I feel really bad. Or now I have to make up for it. Right. Yeah. Like I mm-hmm. obviously just like rescheduled every, like, right. Everyone gets an extra week on mm-hmm. the other side, mm-hmm. but like, mm-hmm. yeah yeah, do I have to, it almost felt, it, it, it almost felt like a, a hangover of like, mm-hmm. am I like a, I don't know, this kind of like weird guilty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. 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 And essentially the, the part of the, the work and the process is like, can I just trust myself? It's not even if for me, yeah, it's, it's this idea of like, can I give myself what I need so I can practice what I preach, but also yeah. like, can I trust this? Yeah. And can I, it's uncomfortable. And can I sit in that, this discomfort, not the discomfort of like, oh, I feel guilty. The discomfort of I'm choosing me. I'm choosing what feels true to me. And that can feel uncomfortable too. And then you sort of, by sitting in it with presence, you like acclimate yourself to that. Well, and I think what's interesting and I'm realizing now as we're talking is like, if I have to cancel a client session because I have because I'm sick. I don't, I guess I don't have a story about that. It's just like, sorry, dude, like I'm sick. Right. And when I know my clients will be fine with that. Similarly, if I had had to cancel something because Birdie was sick, mm-hmm. I would have had no concern about that, mm-hmm. but specifically what has felt vulnerable. And again, my clients are the actual greatest. And so it's been a non-issue, but what has felt complicated is I am canceling because my emotions are mm-hmm. in need. Mm-hmm. And somehow that feels inappropriate. Totally. So much less allowed in our Yeah. World. Yeah. Um and uh and and also like um you know not, not to like make too go too far down a rabbit hole, but then also some sense of like how do I not how do I not make my problem my client's problem? Like it's my like I'm the space holder here in this particular container, and also like be transparent, right? Um, so, anyways, navigating all of that. Um, and what was really interesting? So basically, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were just these like tremendous like waves of feeling. It was like there was no story, there was like there was no. It was just like, I had feelings and the body had feelings and I had feelings and the body had feelings. And I just sat in them and witnessed them. And, um, and then (laughs) Thursday came around and I, all of Thursday afternoon into the evening ended up having an almost indescribable experience of like transcendental, transcendent, transcendent peace. Mm-hmm. that I think in some ways I've never 
I have like both never felt and also always known. Mm, I know why I think what you mean. I think I, yeah. Cause I think you posted something on Instagram mm, and yeah. I think that's why I like, I was, I saw that and I was like, okay, good. Like I knew you'd be good. My girl's okay. Yeah. But also I was like, okay, yeah, my girl's okay. Like I saw that and I was like, okay, cool, cool. cool. We're good. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, how do you, what do you make of that? You know, what was um, that? Also in transparency, Friday was like, it was hellish oh. all over again. Right. Like let's, I don't want to like, <laughs> I, I understand yeah yeah mm-hmm. um but also like also beautiful like my mom came to visit and so we stayed up by like to like five o'clock like, we stayed up till one o'clock in the no, midnight we stayed up midnight mm-hmm. by the fire pit outside just like talking and crying mm-hmm. and loving each other it was like it was oh. so beautiful mm-hmm. I have the actual greatest mom sorry every other mom out there but well except for my mom yeah <laughs> <laughs> We have very um, different moms. Like I, I don't know if I would say anyway. Well, that's yeah. another conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I it was um anyway, it was, it was But a I very, also very love sweet. your mom, so I I get it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Um uh anyway, so it, so anyways, so Friday was it was its own funny thing because then we both she came for the weekend and it was Mother's Day. We both were just like crying mm-hmm. <laughs> and like taking care of each other and like which was its own beautiful thing, and she's coming back at the end of the month and I was like we'll have a fun Mother's Day on Memorial Day weekend this was our you know yeah. this was the, the the holding each other weekend but anyway um what was I gonna say oh so this like experience of real peace I've never had emotions come so strongly without a narrative attached to them. And what I mean by that is like, I actually think if you were to use the lens of inner child, like I actually think it was an inner child, me who like was pre-language. I actually think it was like my six month old self almost Mm. who was like responding most strongly. And so, uh, so there was not, like a narrative. Um, and also I really try to practice unhooking from story and diving into experience with varying levels of success. And so the whole experience was just like, oh, do you feel grief? Can you fall into the grief? Mm -hmm. Instead of, do you feel grief and can you fix it? It was like, do you feel grief and can you fall into the grief? Do you feel anger? Can you fall into the anger? Do you feel abandoned? Can you fall into being that sense of being alone? Um, And because it was so, because it was so intense, the feelings and because story was like, more obviously superficial I think it like just cracked it just like poured me into something else in which you know grief is love and Mm. abandonment is intimacy and Mm. like anger is everything so I think, um, I think I basically tripped and fell into something really painful and then let it, and then I didn't try to escape it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) it's almost like the image that I have now is like jackpot, like, like, like a casino, like ding, 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 ding. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, uh, I didn't try to escape it. And so it, the when it what when like the wave cracked or when the when the wave crested it was like oh this is this is peace this is Mm. like a complete (sighs) a couple months ago we recorded an episode about restlessness and it was like the complete opposite experience of like i was i was i was i had spent these couple of days so committed to not escaping Mm -hmm. that like restlessness just like 
faded. And I just was, there was nothing to try to escape from. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you were just like here. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love the um, analogy of like when the wave crashed or crested, is that what you said? Yeah. That underneath that was, then you got to experience what I think is always there. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, peace. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think uh, it's so hard to put into words, but I think underneath, so I don't know. I, I almost wonder if sometimes if we can stay, yeah, it's like almost... I wonder if it's almost more palpable and easy to actually access that kind of peace when we have something tumultuous going around. And I don't mean that as in like, I think that can be misinterpreted. I think for a long time for me, I was more comfortable in chaos because chaos was my norm. And so I like found peace in chaos. I don't mean that. I just mean that it like heightens your, heightens everything. And you feel like that's the other thing about, I think, being in this, like, emotional crisis. I know for me, is like, it's sometimes messy, but I feel really fucking alive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're just like, yes. You know, that's like- And that's- not the alive of, like, oh, I'm having all this, like, adrenaline, right? Because I was talking to a very good friend of mine who, like, has her PhD in these things, and she was like, hey, let's just check in, like, are you having, like, PTSD responses, right? She was like, are you having, like, trouble sleeping? Are you having, like, panic? And I was like, thank you for asking Mm -hmm. and no like I feel tremendously alive but it it doesn't have that like um that like panicky edge of fear Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. just like yeah just I don't know how to describe it but just being like tremendously like oh this is where I exist Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and I'm really grateful for that feeling because I think there's been times where I know what it's like to be like detached or numbed out or um and you know what's really funny is like I think being really anxious isn't that far away from being numbed out because like when I'm really anxious yeah it's like I you know again it's that living from the neck up feeling where I'm like so it's so weird I mean listeners who have anxiety or who have experienced that just like the hysteria of like your mind going around circles know exactly what I'm talking about (laughs) you don't actually feel that alive you're just in your head a lot Um, and so I guess, sorry, it's a long convoluted way of saying like, it's odd that there's a beauty in that feeling alive because it's better, I think, than the, like a sleep numbed out, um, disassociated feeling I get sometimes when I'm like really anxious or whatever. Yeah. And I think what was interesting is like part of what I was witnessing even is about and and still am even is about disassociation like grief would drop in and it would feel like someone else's grief and i was like oh that's mm. because i have rejected you forever mm. and so even like even my aliveness had components of disassociation it's just that i could see them right which is why like there was a fork in the road of like i can choose to be fine because I have chosen to disassociate in so many ways. And so I can choose that again, Mm -hmm. or I can choose myself, Mm -hmm. which is to choose to fucking feel. Mm -hmm. I also think it's interesting because I had had uh, my friends who are super magical had um we had done like a trait and so they had held space for me in a session like a couple days before this happened and afterwards I messaged them and I was like so time's not real and you gave me a session for the thing before the thing happened (laughs) that was like basically what happened but in that session this phrase dropped into my mind or into my heart which was I am fear itself Mm -hmm. mm-hmm And normally when you would hear that, I feel like you would think like, oh, I'm so scary and ferocious, Mm -hmm. but I have like come to like really like love, like I actually feel kind of emotional because what it's come to mean for me is like, I am everything I'm afraid of. 
So there's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I hear you say that, I think of mm, like, I'm everything I'm afraid of. Because I feel like someone could hear that and say, well, wait, that's not good. If you're, af- if you're everything that you're afraid of, uh, why wouldn't you be afraid? Yeah. But I take that to mean that there's like no separation between like good or bad or right or wrong or that you don't need to be afraid of what you are. <laughs> and there's nothing outside of me like there's n- there's nothing that exists outside of me like I actually had that felt sense of how much like oh actually nothing exists outside of me and also like like of all the things that I'm afraid of and again, intellectually, we know this, but the intensity of this experience has allowed me to feel it in my mm-hmm. body, right? But like rejection, abandonment, grief, rate, like, like, or like, okay. No one outside of me can abandon me. It's mm. only ever me abandoning me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like, and I, and I felt that right? Mm -hmm. And I felt this wound of abandonment and I felt how fully like nothing outside of me exists. I know that sounds trippy. Just go with me. (laughs) And therefore like no one can abandon me because it's only ever me. Mm -hmm. And so I can either choose me or I can abandon me. Yeah, That's it. But that's like a very liberating thought. There's yeah. something really, um, like, no one can abandon me except me. I don't know. I mean, that to me, folks, like, ultimate freedom. Like, yeah. when I sit in this space of you talking about it, what I feel is, like, that's, like, really powerful because, like, the power is in your hands. In like a really beautiful, in like a really beautiful way. Like when you see that, like meaning you're not a victim to the circumstance, but actually like you are, you get to choose and that's. And maybe I'm, maybe in any given moment, I am choosing abandonment. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is also okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, because like to your point, nothing's good or bad. And so maybe sometimes I do choose to abandon myself and, um, that's just an experience I'm having. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, yeah, and I could just, I had, I had this afternoon of like, like reading my book, which is like a fun novel. Like it was like, you know, not some like profound thing. Um, and it was really nice out and my, my son had really loved, he's newly really into audio stories. So he was like listening to this, like these like podcast audio stories and coloring and my daughter was like in and out and cuddling. I was outside a lot. And it was like, everyone was content. Mm. Like, I don't think my kids have ever been that peaceful. But also because like, I was like, so like, I was just radiating mm-hmm. peace because I was having this experience of like, oh, it's just me, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I feel like are like, these are the same words we always say, but it's just that they, I, I felt them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. A M- couple of thoughts on this. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's what's happening is, um, <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest, I think that's like a lot of what this podcast is, is like, we know these things. And then if we're really lucky, and we often are because I think we have because really we get to choose all the time. Then we come back on here. I'm like, I know we've said this before, but it, it's like, yeah, it drops in even deeper because you just had this like really profound experience. So it's not, 
and you're going deeper. It's not like, and then deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper still. Yeah. Um, so I feel that way often is like, I'm just saying the same thing. It's just the experience, my personal experience anyway, was yeah, even more. Did you ever read a book? Like maybe you like read a book when you were a kid and then you reread it and you're like, oh, there's a whole layer of meaning here that I didn't see. And now I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of what this always feels like, right? It's like, yeah. oh yeah, it's just me choosing me. And then you're like, guys, no, yep. it's just me. Choosing yep. Me. yep. So like, that's going to happen. I guess what I think is so forever. interesting though, forever, but it's also interesting. Like I know I've listened to podcasts before where I'll hear someone talk about something and either, either I'm like not really paying attention. Maybe I'm like cooking on the side or maybe it sounds nice or maybe it's, I get it intellectually. And then like, I don't know, it could be two weeks, two months, two years later, I'll be like, oh, like then I will be able to relate from two years ago to this thing that someone said, not because I didn't understand it because, but it's because, like, oh, now I'm having an experience in a really deep way. Yeah. And this is also like one of the reasons I love Eckhart Tolle is because every time I read a new earth or segments of a new earth, I like it. I, I like I experience it really deeply, but I always experience it like in a different way, really mm -hmm. deeply. Um, yeah. And I think part of why I wanted to like talk about this on the podcast for all that I'm now having this experience of how hilarious and outside of words this experience is, is like, I have chosen that my magic is, I fully experience consistently that in speaking to these things, it activates for other people to remember and therefore experience them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think some, one reason why I wanted to have, to have this conversation for all that maybe it is cryptic and, and vague or whatever. I might have, I might have some story about whether it's a quote unquote good episode. I also trust that in speaking to this experience, it is speaking to some part of you that's like, Oh, I'm like waking up like from my slumber mm -hmm. and I'm remembering that I get, it is me choosing me. Um, and that maybe then it is easier for in so doing, it becomes consistent, consistently easier for all of us to just keep fucking choosing ourselves yep. rather than abandoning ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that being said, I still have, I have questions. Yeah, actually yeah, there's yeah. actually, I have like a couple of like, just like tangents. One, I want to talk about, I want to talk about this, like uh, let me small start with a smaller question, but I want to make sure I get to this bigger question too. So just okay. remind me in case we get okay. carried away. I don't know if this is like worth going into, but I was very intrigued that you said abandonment is just intimacy. Mm. That caught my attention because I understand what you like, you know, I've had the experience of grief is love. That one I think is anyway, well, actually we were, I think we're having someone on the podcast soon who's written a book all about how grief is love. So like, yeah, can you talk about how abandonment is, is intimacy. Yeah. We fear. Mm. What is our fear of abandonment other than a fear that we are alone? And what are we hungry for other than to be in intimate communion? Mm. And so Abandonment has to be intimacy because it is the thing, it is its own, it, everything is its own inverse. Do you mean, okay, wait, hold on. So, mm -hmm. cause like, let me think about this. Cause when I feel that grief is love, the reason that feels, that feels quite simple for me is because it's almost like, um, stripping away the layers or like, uh, I think um yeah let's just say stripping with layers it's like okay well why do I feel grief oh, it's because I like well I mean it's so simple it's because I love because this I person. love this person I love this person and then or like why do I miss yeah. this period of my life well it's because it's so good like like that um intellectually makes a certain kind of sense well not that yeah and also I can feel that like mm, that's mm -hmm. so but when you say Maybe I can, under, I can understand how like a longing a longing like abandonment creates a longing for intimacy Maybe it's easier if I slot this word in 
although I don't think it's required. If I say abandonment is the portal to intimacy. Mm. Because how did I create for myself intimacy with my, with like intimacy with myself is like, that's a whole separate thing. (laughs) (laughs) But how did I create for myself intimacy of like, you know, feeling infinite and connected to source and all these things. I fell into the abandonment, Mm. right? I like leaned all the way into what it, to the contour and the shape and the particular pain of abandonment and realized in sitting fully in it, it doesn't exist. Mm. There's only ever intimacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so abandonment is intimacy as in the thing we are afraid of is the thing we want. It's not the thing we want. The thing we are afraid of is what we have to move through to what we want. The thing we are afraid of actually Mm -hmm. is is the thing we want. want. And if you fall into it deep enough, Mm -hmm. you can experience that it, 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 it is. And therefore this is kind of what that phrase I am fear itself meant for me. Like if you fall into it deep enough, you recognize how fully it is the thing you want and therefore you already have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, sorry, what I was gonna say is everyone just go fall into all of these like really big, big emotions. Yeah. And I don't mean that in like a trite way. Like um, it really is the, I mean, yeah, it is the portal. Like to not, to feel safe enough and to like love yourself enough to do that is like such a big gift and and sorry let me just say the reason I'm saying that is because I feel like I'm trying to just like put a nice like bow on it is because no matter how much you and I talk about it it's it doesn't fucking matter like we could talk about ad nauseum we're just setting some furtive ground I think for maybe someone who maybe is about to have emotional crisis coming up in a couple weeks who knows for you go to go do the damn thing yourself so that you can go yeah. see because it doesn't matter what we yeah. can see it, it's like it's it all needs to be experienced it's and you're going to learn through the experience and it's meant mm. to be experienced so like yes when you get to that diving board dive the fuck in <laughs> if you are resourced for it like you feel like it's not gonna blow you out because yes you know you have right. to be you have to like gauge what your um like window of tolerances. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, and that, that's, that's another version of like choosing yourself, right? Choosing mm-hmm. what you have the capacity mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. I think also, I think another thing that's important is that from the moment this, I got this email, I didn't, it, this was not a situation to fix. Mm-hmm. It was just something to witness and experience. Right. Um, and that's hard. That's a thing. That's why, like, this is why this is such an important topic is because you can say that now. And, but like when any, when any of us gets to that precipice, it's like, it's fucking hard. So that's actually, it was interesting. That was so fucking clear to me that that was the easiest part, that there's mm-hmm. nothing to fix here was so, and I, one of the things I said to my mom is I was like, I'm actually really 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 glad I got this email now and not a decade ago Mm -hmm. because a decade ago it would have been about like it would have been my response would have been about like fixing and taking action action. yeah yeah and like making decisions but what I mean but when I say what's really hard is I don't mean the not taking action I mean like the being in the soup like just to be in it can sometimes feel scary and hard yes oh yeah for sure I mean I think the way I described it to a friend was like I think this is the hardest thing I've done. And also it feels like the only possible option. Mm -hmm. But I think that's because I've built up enough resiliency of like, oh, if I feel the feelings and I don't make it a problem to fix, it takes, like, I have, like, I enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think the other thing I want to speak to is like, let yourself build up a fucking trust muscle, Mm -hmm. right? Start like, like, all the tiny ways in which we maybe let ourselves cry at the movie or maybe like notice that we're trying to fix and step back from fixing all of those little moments I think builds an incredible tolerance so that when a moment of like of crisis hits 
not only are you resourced in terms of like the people in your life, but you're resourced as in like, like I have the trust muscle that sitting in this is safe, that there isn't anything to fix. Like my whole body just was like, like, uh, like almost like muscle memory, right? Like nothing to fix here. Like it wasn't even available to go looking for a problem to fix. Right. Well, I think and that that's like that. I think this stuff can become automated. Yeah. And that's really fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> and and I think like there's actually, there's actually no difference between choosing ourselves in crisis and choosing ourselves in small, small moments, mm -hmm. right? Like they're all, they're all equal. And so I think the other thing I want to speak to is like, you know, this is the girl who like runs for the first time in her whole life and then almost immediately signs up for a half marathon. Like mm -hmm. I like theatrics. Mm -hmm. And so for my listeners who also put pressure on themselves to be theatrical, I want to say like the tiny, the seemingly tiny moments when you choose yourself are all that matters because then when the big moments show up, mm -hmm. it's like you just, you fall, you can fall in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a training. It's like, yeah. um, you going with the running me me metaphor. It's like, uh, like every walk that you take or every small two second jog that you go for will actually ultimately prepare you yeah. for that longer marathon. <laughs> yeah. So that like, yeah. So that the efforting is like, I wasn't like forcing myself to be like, stop trying to fix problems called well, stop trying like, it just, you know, that wasn't, yeah. Though I have yet. been there too. Like, that's the thing. I think mm -hmm. being there also helped me prepare. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. yes. And the, I'm sure this experience will prepare me for like some other version of like, oh, here's a, like, here's another Ragnarok. Like, mm 